Good morning, everybody. This is one of those times where I wish I had my sunglasses on, so I'm going to be all squinty through this video. Uh, as you know, I was on vacation a couple of weeks ago, and I want to share with you a story from my vacation that taught me a lesson, and I think it has something to offer you as well. My name is Ed Trevers. I'm an Anglican priest in the Diocese of Nova Scotia in Prince Edward Island. I get to serve in the awesome parish of Christ Church Shelburne. Um, in the amazing, beautiful town of Shelburne, Nova Scotia, that sits on the ancestral and the unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq people. So, yeah, we were on vacation. And uh, while we were on vacation, we took a day and we walked around the town I, I, I grew up in, uh, a little town called Chatham, that sits right on the Miramichi, Miramichi River. It's now part of the city of Miramichi. And we walked down uh, downtown Chatham, down Water Street, and on Water Street in downtown Chatham, there is this amazing German bakery. Uh, it's just, it's the, it's so good, it's so good. Their 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 stuff is delicious. Service is wonderful. The location is quaint and 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 welcoming. It's it's amazing on every level. And and just to give you a little uh, a, a little information about this story, I haven't had. Uh, I haven't had an honest-to-goodness dessert in about 18 months. Uh, as a matter of fact, I think it was, it, was, it was February 14th, 2019, and I'm recording this in August 2020. So it's been a long time since I've had a real, what most people would consider a dessert. And so we were in the German bakery, and everybody was getting something, and, uh, and my, I asked my wife, is it worth it? And, and by that I mean, is it worth, is the dessert that she is currently eating would it be worth eating and breaking this, this, this long streak? And she looked at me and she smiled and she said, yes. And so I got my first dessert since February 14th, 2019. I got something called a trapper square, which is a, a type of whole wheat, wonderful, crumbly, moist cake topped with a little the perfect amount of icing sugar and I enjoyed it. I loved it. It was so tasty. It was sweet and it was wonderful and it was amazing and it was it was absolutely the best dessert I could have had in that moment. It was everything about the experience was awesome. And then about an hour later then it's, then it got less awesome. See, after you take sugar out of your diet for so long, your body doesn't really know what to do with it. It doesn't process it, I think, like it used to. And so my body began processing this cake in a way that I didn't necessarily appreciate, i.e. my tummy started rumbling. I, you get the idea. So here's this cake that I ate <clears throat> that was absolutely delicious, absolutely wonderful, fantastic job, German bakery in downtown Chatham. It was, it was amazing, and it was absolutely worth breaking my streak over. And yet, a little while later, I would argue that it was not worth breaking the streak over. While it tasted amazing, it, my body just didn't like it. It did not agree with me. It did not agree with me. And, and I suffered for it. And so the lesson I learned in it isn't just, just stay away from desserts. The lesson I learned from it is, you know, a lot of things in our lives feel really good in the moment. They taste really good in the moment. They are amazing. They're sweet and delicious and, 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 and they make us feel wonderful and they make us feel alive and they make us feel fantastic. And then within a short period of time, we pay for it. Within a short period of time, we suffer for it. Within a short period of time, we realize that what we had just enjoyed, what we had just eaten, what we had just um, uh, uh, experienced was not something that agreed with us in the long term. There is a, a saint that I'm really fond of. Uh, he's, he's one of my favorites. His name is uh, St. Ignatius of Loyola. And he developed something called uh, his, uh, I want to say it's, it's called the 40 days. 
it, it's a it's a long uh, it's it, these exercises that you do um, over a period of weeks, and, and each week you do certain exercises that sort of help develop you for the next week, and so on and so forth. And those exercises are all meant to bring us to a place of a deeper spirituality, a place of a deeper spiritual meaning, a deeper uh, spiritual relationship with God. And in it, he talks about this thing called the discernment of spirits. And this is in his first week. And in the discernment of spirits, he says, it's difficult trying to figure out if it is the spirit of God talking to you or the spirit of the enemy talking to you. If it's a spirit of, of, of holiness, it's a, if it's a spirit of righteousness, if it's a spirit, i.e. that what you're hearing, what you're thinking, what you're feeling, is that something that is going to bring you closer to God? Or is it something that's going to move you further away from God? And we can take that, that idea and we can apply it to other parts of our lives as well. We can look at it and say, is this, is this decision going to bring me closer to God? Is this, going to, this decision going to make me a better person? Is this decision going to bring me closer to my goals? And if it is, then we should do it. But if it isn't, we shouldn't do it. But sometimes Ignatius says, even then we're not entirely certain because in the moment it can feel like that's going to bring me closer. That's going to bring me closer to God. It's going to make me a better person. It's going to bring me closer to my goals. And in the end, it doesn't. And so what he says is one of the ways we can discern that spirit is also to ask ourselves, if I do this or that, if I partake in this or that, if I experience this or that, we almost always feel good in the moment. If we don't, it's not of God. If, however, a few hours go by, or a day, or a week, or, or, or so long goes by, and, and all of a sudden we start regretting what we've done, it starts not because it was necessarily, a, a, not because something didn't work out, but because it doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel right that we've done it. We've, we're experiencing guilt, or shame, or, or grief because of it. And it probably wasn't, it probably wasn't of God's spirit. It was probably of something else. See, the idea of the enemy isn't necessarily to destroy us by physically damaging us. Sometimes the idea of the enemy is just to make us feel like crap. It's to make us feel like what we've just put into our bodies, what we've just experienced, is horrible. And it makes us literally feel bad, feel sick, feel emotionally drained, feel depressed, feel grief, feel shame feel whatever. Because if we can feel bad about it, then all of a sudden it takes us a little bit of time to rebuild ourselves. It takes us a little bit of time to get back on track. It takes us a little bit of time to heal and, and, to, and to get better so that we can go on and do the next thing. That's the spirit of the enemy at work. When it's the spirit of God, we don't feel these ways afterwards. Something may or may not work out and we, and we may be frustrated, but we're not feeling things that require us to heal. So if you're looking at a decision in life, if you're looking at a piece of wonderful cake from a delicious bakery and you're wondering, should I do it? Should I eat it? Should I, should I partake in it? Should I experience it? Ask yourself how you're going to feel in a couple of hours because of it. Ask yourself how you're going to feel in a couple of days because of it. Ask, your, ask yourself how you're going to feel in a few months because of it. And if those feelings are going to be guilt and dread and shame and grief and all these other negative feelings, anger and hatred, loathing, all those things, then don't do it. It's not God talking to you. It's the enemy talking to you. May God bless you. May God keep you. May God make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and may you know the peace of being in God's presence. And I pray that as decisions and as options appear in your life and you're wondering what you'll do, ask yourself those questions. Will it, bring me, will it make me a better person? How will I feel in a little while because of this? Amen.